What is going on everybody? It is Bush Fishing and we are back for part two of this series on this Inmar 5.7 Monsoon 350SS. To recap on the last video, if you guys haven't seen it, we essentially got this motor out of the boat and into the shop back here and we're going to be working on it today. This video is going to be the disassembly of it. Now I'm not going to be stripping it fully down to the block and this is going to take a little bit longer because I'm having to look for what's wrong with it. I'm not set on that I need to rebuild it yet. It could be some Something simple. The ideas that I have are the main one that I'm kind of leaning to is that whoever rebuilt this put the rings in upside down because this engine will run perfectly fine but it won't seal as well as it would if the rings were the right way around and that would give us 100 psi of compression rather than 170 psi. The other things it could be is cam timing off. The ignition timing could be perfectly fine which it is, I've checked it, I've adjusted it, done everything to it, but if the cam is off a tooth or something, it would give us some issues like this. Now, this thing runs around 42 miles an hour wide open. I've been on many of the Malibu TXIs before, and I'll get 48 miles an hour out of them, but it kind of depends on the motor in it, stuff like that, so that would make sense, but the only way to find out is for us to look into it. Now, I didn't end up cleaning the shop at the end of last video, so that's the first thing I'm going to start with. I'm going to have to literally go through everything here, because I haven't used it in a while, and organize all my tools and move some new stuff in but if you guys are new here i'm bush fishing or the owner of st marine nice to meet you and we're gonna have a whole lot more motor videos coming this is what i do for a living i do it a lot but i'm just starting to film it what i was doing was kind of the older stuff like old evan roots that's kind of where i specialize in and those videos seem to do very well so i do work on stern drives in boards v drive all kinds of stuff like that every single day and it's gonna be nice kind of bringing you guys into it with this time i have off in the winter and hopefully i'll start bringing you guys on like service calls and dockside service in the summer but if that's anything you guys are interested in make sure to subscribe down below there's gonna be a whole lot more coming but for now i'm gonna get you guys on a time lap and i'm gonna kind of pull everything out of the shop Alrighty folks, so lost my tripod so this is going to be interesting, but I got the shop all cleaned up and everything, looks real pretty, kinda, there's still a lot of stuff in here, but we're going to get started on this motor now. First thing I'm going to be taking off is the manifolds, I want to get the big stuff out of the way. My process right now is kind of going to be manifold, so exhaust manifolds, intake manifold, and then valve covers and have a look at the rockers. I still need to get all the oil out of this and the blocks full of antifreeze. So there's probably gonna be some of the manifolds, but we'll see. I don't know if the guy pulled the plugs out after he ran the antifreeze through, which is what I usually do, but we're sure gonna find out when the floor gets wet. I'm gonna try and set you guys up somewhere so I can best explain this, but essentially we have a crossover hose in the back of the manifold that can just get disconnected back there. And then we have our main water feed to the manifolds that's gonna come from the thermostat in the front. I'm gonna take them off the thermostat housing so the hoses all come with the manifold and get as much stuff off of this block as I can to give me the most room. And the easiest thing I'm gonna do is unplug the O2 sensors up top. Now, I don't have masking tape, but I do have colored electrical tape. I'm gonna be writing down everything that I disconnect and where it goes. So this would be, let's see, this is a Chevy. So this would be bank two pre-cap. So I'm gonna label like B2, uh, P1 or some bullshit like that. And then uh, I'll do the same thing on the opposite, same thing on the other side. I'm also gonna be writing down everything that I do. I don't care how many times you've taken apart a motor and stuff like that. I guess you don't have to, but for me, it helps me the most. I write down everything that I disconnect, everything I take off as I do it. So for instance, I'll have my notebook here and I'll write down exhaust manifold, intake manifold. And then when I put it together, I just do it in the reverse order. It's easy way not to forget something, especially when it's not your own motor, which on this one, I'm gonna try and do a really good job of showing you guys all the torque specs and stuff putting it back together because that's something I haven't really been good at the difference now is that it's fall it's cold out it's like 40 degrees outside and rainy in my previous ones I've been rebuilding those outboards in the middle of summer and people want their boats back so they can go fishing go use it do whatever so I kind of it's difficult to record and do all that stuff because it takes a whole lot extra time but I got nothing but time on this one because it's not going back on the water until the spring alrighty with everything labeled we're at the front of the motor now I have the oxygen sensor uh, disconnected. I'm gonna start off with these water hoses. I'm gonna get everything off before I pop the manifold off. They're not crazy heavy, but they are kind of heavy. We're gonna pop these hose clamps completely off. And the important thing is to re-tighten them lower down on the hose so you don't lose them. Same thing on the port side. I think I messed up port and starboard before. It's weird because they'll put these motors in a B drive and then they're facing backwards and then 
All right, with those disconnected, you're gonna take your hose tool that I don't have back here. Now I'm just using a screwdriver to kind of shove in there and break the hose loose. You get it twisted a little bit, it should make it a little easier. All right, there's one of them off. I ended up getting an actual little pick. Now we just got the other one. Ah! Got you, biatch. Alrighty, with those two disconnected from the top, this water line just connects to the elbow back here, so that one can stay on. We have out of the bottom of the manifold, we have our crossover hose. And all we have to do is disconnect this. We're going to lose some antifreeze, but then we'll be ready to pop the manifold off. Alrighty, now that we've got the manifolds drained into a bin and kind of on the floor, pretty much ready to take them off and do 9 sixteenths. I'm gonna crack these loose all by hand because I wanna see. I've already found some things on this motor that weren't torqued, and these seem like they're at the right torque. I'm kinda cracking them from the outside in, and I'm gonna leave one of the center ones in until the end, until I'm ready to drop it. Which it seems like these were torqued, so that's good. Motor mount not being torqued is a little questionable, but oh, same with the bell housing bolts. All right, so we'll pop these all the way out, get them bagged up and labeled. You know what I always say? Not cavemen anymore. exhaust manifold. Gave her the old silicone gaskets. Alrighty, I'm just gonna lay this up on the ground because there are pretty big parts, but you see how much more access we have to this side of the motor already. Okay, same thing on the port side. Oh yeah. Alrighty, now moving on, we've got the manifolds off. We're gonna be moving on to the intake manifold. It's gonna be quarter inch Allens, six of them on top, and there's three things you gotta do. You're gonna have your crankcase breather tube comes from the valve cover, pops right off. You can leave that with the actual uh, air filter. We can take this all off as one unit, get the most stuff out of the way. You have your map sensor, manifold air pressure. Just lift up on the tab, pull it out label it and then down here you have your throttle position sensor as well as throttle actuator this takes the inputs from the shifter and tells this little electric motor how much to open the uh, throttle plate the sensor in this read how far the throttle plates open and it compares it to the shifter position and that's how it keeps itself accurate so we'll take this off label it label it uh the crankcase breather you don't really have to but with those disconnected i'm gonna quick label them and then we'll pop this intake off all right you guys are a little cockeyed so sorry about that quarter inch allen and take out the six on top and we'll be ready to lift this baby off now these all have little washers in them. So you're gonna wanna make sure to grab all of them out of the hole, use a little pick. You do not want these to fall out somewhere or worse, fall off in the motor. You're gonna grab a little mallet to help you break it free. Or if you just got really strong arms, you can grab it. Grab it like this and yank her off. Here's what your underside looks like. It is gasketed. This one's got a real gasket, surprisingly. So this gasket's gonna stay with it. We're gonna replace this when we put it back together. But that actually came off all in one piece, so we're gonna set this by our exhaust manifolds. And now we've got access to a bunch more stuff, like fuel rails, distributor, cap rotor, pretty much all that. At this point, I need to make a decision. Alrighty, well, I just decided, rather than taking the valley cover, stuff like that off, I need to get the valve covers off anyway, but this is gonna give me an idea of what the valve train looks like, so I'm gonna pop both valve covers off now. Alrighty, for the valve covers, we've got four bolts right on top, the longer bolts, and they're gonna be 3 16 Allen, 3 16 Yep, 3 16 Allen, pop those eight off, this is super simple, I'm not gonna show you, and then I'll pop the valve covers off. Alrighty, at this point, I'm gonna unplug most of the wiring harness, so I've got everything labeled, like down here, crank, injectors, stuff like that. I've got everything labeled while it's on the motor that I could get to. I'm going to unplug everything and kind of peel it all towards the back of the motor to give me some room. At that point, I do think I'm going to have to pull the valley cover off and cap and rotor, stuff like that. Most of the accessories, I'm going to try and leave them hanging or all together like part of the harness, but that'll give me a lot more room. And then probably going to have to get to the FIAD system, front end accessory drive. But for now, I'm going to do the electronics. We'll go from there.
That's your entire wiring system. So that's a whole bunch of stuff out of the way, which will make our life a lot easier. Alrighty, I'm on a bit of a time crunch, so I'm going to time lapse taking off the whole Fiat. So basically, in order to get the belt off, your alternator's on this little swing bracket. Loosen up the bottom one, swing the alternator in, pop the belt off. In order to get the belt fully off, we're going to have to take off the bracket for the water pump, which we need to get off anyway. Take the bracket off, and then you've got these three Allens, and the actual impeller housing will come out. I've loosened up these two clamps, so I'm going to pop the elbow off. The boots are going to stay with the thermostat housing. Three bolts on top for the thermostat housing. And then you have your water pump bolts, alternator bracket, the rest of it. Really simple. Take pictures of it. And then we'll pretty much be at the point where we need to take the circulation pump. If I get the names messed up and they confuse you, I worked in automotive and then diesel and then marine. Circulation pump, water pump, according to the marine industry. Impeller housing and then your actual water pump and automotive. Same idea. This circulates it through the block. This sucks it up from the lake and shoots it into the block. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, look at that. We've got no more FIAD system. Next up, I'm going to get the valley cover and the lower intake plenum off, as well as cap and rotor and this accessory shit in the back. So, to get the injectors out, you'll see down here, got a little Allen right in there. That is your hold down for the fuel rail. Pop that out, pop that one out, and these will pull straight up and down. Injectors should stay with the rail and pop out, but sometimes the injectors pop out. So we're gonna do that on both sides. Pop the rail up, and then at that point, cap and rotor and distributor out, which I might leave distributor in for now because I wanna check timing. And then we will pull all of these uh, valley cover bolts out and lift the whole valley out, and we will be down at the block. Alrighty everybody, we have made some serious progress on this thing today for the little bit of time that I was here. I have to finish up today because I want the next video to be the actual diagnosis of it. And I also don't have the balancer puller, which I think I can get away with using a three jaw on it. We will have to see, but in the next video you guys are going to see me pull the heads off and do the actual diagnostics of finding out why this has low compression. Kind of recap, at the end it was mostly time lapses because I needed to get the stuff done. I took off all of the wiring on the whole motor and the whole fiat system which was really alternator alternator bracket um, thermostat housing and water pump circulation pump housing and then the actual impeller housing so with all that off as well as distributor cap rotor all that stuff in the little bracket in the back we're left with this now your engine if it's stock it's not gonna look like this this has little brock heads on it and you can see by these hog ass rockers it's well We'll save that for tomorrow's video, but this is what your block looks like. So on a Chevy, if you've really never seen this, on a Chevy you have a single cam in here. Cam's got lobes on it, which essentially, in the simplest term, push these rods up. So these rods come in from here, push up on this rocker, and push down on the valve. When the valve goes down, air is allowed to either go out the exhaust or in through the intake. Air will either flow this way or go out the exhaust. The real difference in the marine application is where the air goes afterwards. In the marine application, the air is going to come out the exhaust and come up and get mixed in with water, all that. And the car is just going to be your manifolds and stuff. What I need to know is what is in here. So after I get the balancer off, I'll have the timing cover off. I'm going to check timing because if it's off by a tooth, we could have some issues like that. Still kind of thinking of ideas, but I'm kind of hoping that the piston rings are upside down. That would be super simple. But yeah, at this point, that's all I'm going to do for today. When I come back tomorrow, I'll pop the heads off, all that stuff. If you guys enjoyed this, video make sure to leave a like comment subscribe if you want to see this thing get fixed still stay subscribed because the next video that's going to be coming out is going to be actually fixing it finding out the issues and then i'm gonna to have to order part and we'll get the reassembly the reassembly is going to be really good because it's going to have every single torque spec it's going to be a really long video it will help you do it at home on your own because when you have a shop you have to charge for labor depending on what your labor rate is whether it's 100 bucks an hour 
hour, 170 bucks an hour, which in marine stuff, it's usually pretty expensive. You're paying someone to do this for you. If you're watching this video, you're most likely thinking about tackling this on your own, so hopefully this will be your full guide and let you actually see things, because when you look through the manual and it tells you how to do it, it gives you black and white pictures and has all these names for things that you might not understand. First, looking at it, watching someone doing it, you'll be able to say, oh, I see these bolts here, these need to come off, these are 9 16ths, whatever. But with all that being said, if you guys enjoyed, like I said earlier, I think already I say this a lot, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.